welcome back to another episode of Unscripted with Fox West Texas Sports. I'm your host, Casey Busher, now joined by ESPN Sports Center anchor, Tony Collins. Thank you so much for joining me. Casey, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this is like going back home for me, being with you. <laughs> I'm just so excited. You, you know Texas, you were in Dallas, McAllen, so it's, so it's so nice to talk to you. But just to start off, what a career that you've had so far from all the different places that you've been. But just getting back to the beginning, what made you want to get into the sports industry? You know what? I grew up with journalism. My mother's a journalist, and I always saw that. I always saw it from day one. And honestly, it was storytelling. I, I understood as I got older the privilege that we have as journalists to take on the responsibility of telling someone's story, of taking the viewers to whether it's a finals or a game or an event. And um, I loved sports. I, I, I was such a – I was always outside. I was always playing. And uh, I even played for the Mexican national team, uh, soccer, football. This is Barcelona. This is complete. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of Barca. But uh, I always wanted to do with sports just because how sports made an impact on me. But um, I started with news and then eventually was able to get into the sports field because at the time when I started, it wasn't really that open and that available as it is right now. So you were born in Mexico. You started your first on-air job in McAllen, like you mentioned, um, yeah. news. Um, so you filled in in sports. But what did that first market do for you in establishing your career in broadcasting? It, ta it has taught me everything. I feel like it's the... It's part of like the college degree that you, everybody should have because you do everything in local from, I mean, I, I worked at a dual station, so it was English and Spanish. So not only was I doing English and Spanish, but there were times when the weather girl wasn't there and hey, let's go do weather or the sports or uh, news, of course, and whether it's anchor or reporting. And I think it taught, it taught me also all the tools that like, hey, no one can tell me you, you've never done this. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I mean, from editing, from your one man band type of thing and uh, it just taught me the core, the foundation of everything that I would understand as I got older and through other job experiences. So you've done all the areas, weather, sports, news. Yes, I did do weather. I swear to you for, for a year because our weather girl uh, was, uh, she was, she was giving birth. So then they're like, and I mean, it was hard. That thing's hard. That's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> Like they, whether people don't get enough credit, because like I don't know what more to say than the temperature outside and if it's raining, snowing, or sunny. And yeah, and then like yeah, no, you have to really. Like, so I, I was a weather girl, not a weather ex. No, I was a weather expert, not a meteorologist. So the meteorologists are the, <laughs> the big so, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so you worked in Dallas, where you covered the finals, the MLB playoffs, the Cowboys. Um, what was your time like in Dallas? Because where I'm at in Abilene. You know, ton of Cowboys fans, Mavericks fans, because it's only two hours away. So what was that time like in Dallas for you? It was honestly the best time of – I would go – if I could go back, I would probably go back to my time in Texas in the different stages. But Dallas was one of a kind. I've, it's a mixture of – Texas, I feel like it's a mixture of culture. You know what I mean? Of, of, of my culture, at least I'm Mexican-American, but um, uh, of that, the passion in sports. I got so lucky to be there 2011. I mean – the Mavericks going to the finals, the Rangers losing in the World Series, but still having the opportunity as a rookie reporter to cover that, to make the connections, to to have that experience under my belt. It's like a dream. And I, I truly, like, I feel like people are like, oh, you're such a bandwagon. But I, I used to be a Marlins fan. I am a Texas Rangers fan all the way. <laughs> my dog's name is Nolan Ryan. He's over there. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> and um, I'm a huge Mavericks fan. I remember when because I'm from Miami, so and they're like, oh, who are you rooting for? And I'm like, who's paying my check? <laughs> so Dallas. <laughs> no, nah, but, you know, I, that, that, that team was amazing. And the Cowboys, it's America's team. And it's funny because in Mexico, they have such a huge following. So seeing that passion was like firsthand one of a kind. Wow, that's incredible. So in 2011, um, so from being from Miami, um, what was that like? Because, you know, in 06, they lose to Miami, and they have yeah. this redemption year that they can win it against Miami. So what, was, what did you notice just from the atmosphere in Dallas and the fans and how everyone rallied around them for their first uh, championship? It was amazing because we, we got to cover the home games, and even we traveled a little bit um, in the playoffs, but 
just how it brought the city together and how much everybody wanted it for Dirk. And to be able to, and just to see the pieces that came together, whether it was with Kid and Berea and Chandler, and they, they just had the, I want to see the perfect team. And then they did it for him. And I've never, so coming, not I'm not from Dallas, but I live there, just seeing how much the city loves da, uh, da, Dirk. They love Tony Romo and how much they really rally behind them or how they love Josh Hamilton. You know, like, it, it's it's funny how it's a, it's a big city, but it's such a small family when they, if they're yours, they're yours. <laughs> like they go for They support you all the way. So that was really nice. I know. It's the best. So what was it like covering the Cowboys? I mean, just the most unreal organization. It's America's team, but they've had, they've had 20 years of kind of a drought. So what was that like? I mean, isn't it crazy how the fans just continue to yeah, this belief? Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, I wish I knew, I wish I had the, you got had the way you handle the Cowboys or their fans. I wish I could handle my personal life. Like that. they have this hope and belief in them that they're going to change and it's going to be their year. I'm like, this year I'll have a <laughs> no, like you know what I mean. It's like this, this, this. The last thing they lose is hope, and they are passionate, and they believe that they are the best team. In the it's and every just, year we're going to the Super Bowl. Every <laughs> year, I'm like, okay, it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. So it's funny how you step into the world, and and you kind of like, I'm like, am I crazy or am I gonna start believing this too? You know. <laughs> You get, you get, you go to those games in Jerry's world. You're like, all right, it's magical. Anything can it's, happen, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so you go to ESPN. Well, you go to Miami and then you, your first job at ESPN is in digital. So what was that like? It was just kind of the beginning, right? Where digital was like becoming this. so big and people were getting news from digital. So what was that like being a digital reporter there? It was, it was a hard, it was hard in the sense because I come from, at that time I came from Univision and I wasn't the top platform there with their morning shows, their magazine show at five, their morning show at seven. And then we had like a sports center version called uh, Contacto Deportivo. And like, I went from, from like, holy wow, that platform and that, that big thing to, Hey, you're going to digital and I don't know, no, but make three minute video, three minute videos on interviews. I'm like, nobody does that. It's like 30 seconds now. But, um, it was, it was, it was humbling. Uh, it was, you learn, I learned so much because I went from switching from, uh, in Spanish television, our focus is in, is Mexican soccer and whatever Hispanic athlete is, is doing great or well or following in the majors. And it was completely erased. I had to start learning bracketology, college hoops, college basketball, college, everything. <laughs> um, and focus more on not every day on the NBA and every day on every major league sport than just the following of a certain player. So it was a great learning experience, great stepping stone, great, great, great. I thank God, thank God. And when people start like, you're crazy. You're leaving what you know. You go to a different language. You don't know anyone. But I, it's that's when you, when you step out of your comfort zone. And I think that's the when you get the best results in the end. Not, not immediately, but eventually. Yeah, absolutely. So with ESPN, what was, I mean, how did you learn all of those different sports, the people, the backgrounds, and the history um, you know, going from something you know so well with soccer to ESPN, where you're learning all these different avenues in sports. You know what? Um, I, unlike any other place I've ever worked, ESPN is one of a kind in the sense that it, it gives you the tools that you need. Honestly, we have a research department. Our our coworkers, my coworkers, my uh, I mean, I want to say the the analysts, the talent. They're so kind in the sense that if you reach out to them and you're like, hey, how can I do this? What can I do here? You do, I would do videos and I would go to my bosses and be like, okay, tell me what I need to do better here. And I'm, I'm never going to forget one of them told me, he's like, we pay you to be better than this. And I'm like, so, okay, so how explain to me? And they do, and they'll be so frank. And it's not, it's not like, uh, to be mean, it's constructive criticism, but it was actually it, it, on me reaching out and using the tools that we have and reaching people and doing the homework, man. Like, yeah, I mean, you move up here, there's really nothing to do, but, but honestly apply yourself to whatever you need to work on and so when you look back on your journey to get to where you're at obviously I'm sure this is a dream job of yours that you have now does it make it more special that you went through so many different markets um, being in McAllen to now at the worldwide le leader of sports does it make it more special that you you know did the work you did the homework you had to learn so many different sports now being at ESPN does it make it more special a hundred percent, a hundred percent, Casey. Like, I don't think there's one day that I don't go on the side and I, I truly, truly, I'm not lying. I, I, I say a prayer of thanks because I know it's a privilege. And I know it can be taken away any day. And I really appreciate 
not only my coworkers how they are, but like I haven't looked. I'm starting to now like look back a little bit and be like, okay, Tony, like <laughs> good job. But I try. I try not to because I'm so. I'm so. I just want to get better. I make. I I'm, listen. I'm human. I still make mistakes and I still get so mad about it. <laughs> and I want to get better. And um, I think I, I, it's a privilege and it's. It's 100% that much sweeter to know that you've worked hard, but you know that there's still so much to do. So, so yeah. yeah. So people in those positions like you're in always say, you know, it's, it's hard to get here, but it's even harder to stay here. Well, you've stayed there. And how, how did you do that? How did you continue to climb from digital to now being on SportsCenter? I, you know, I, I, from Frank, I, <laughs> I, need to, I need to believe more in myself. But, like, I, I've worked my butt off. Like, I really have. I've... Um, it's it's putting the extra time it's asking for help it's it's i i always i I never say no in the sense like if they need an anchor if they need this and they need that i'm like yeah give me the experience whether it's a crappy shit i've never i've always taken the opportunity when it was presented to me even though i've been scared out of my mind maybe obviously (laughs) with the second language with going next to anchors that are legends like hannah storm or who i work with david lloyd but at the end of the day, it's just honestly, when you realize, wow, just be grateful and enjoy the moment. That's one thing that I maybe have, you focus so hard on being better and doing better and that you don't enjoy the, what you just did. Like, oh my God, this isn't my first sports center type of thing. And you're just worried about what you did wrong, what you did right. So it's been more of a, of continuing to, to not, 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 not believe that you're, I don't know, for me, I don't, I, I still believe I have so much more to achieve. So I, it's that, that's what keeps me, you know? So whenever you get to the status that you're at, you're on ESPN, Sports Center, it comes with a lot of fame, right? It comes with followers, it comes with, you know, publicity, all of the above. But it seems like for you, Tony, just the short time that I have talked to you, um, and anyone that I know that, that does know you or has talked to you before, just says how real and, and nice and kind of a person that you are. How did you continue to just stay true to who you are while, you know, climbing the ranks and making it to ESPN now? No, I'm a first thank you. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> I seem like an emotional mess. <laughs> thank you so much. You know what? No, um, I think it's just the way, it's so corny, but like treat people how you want to be treated, right? And I've been treated so well by some people. Sometimes I have not, but um, I think that just makes you, it makes you appreciate when people do treat you nice. And then the whole thing about, I've had a lot of um, being yourself, right? Yeah. That's the yeah, that's the best advice everybody gives you. And like, that's what you need to be. But sometimes it's so tough with all these factors. And, you know, I think just honestly, truly, truly being myself and just here's what I got, here's who I am. And if you, it, it comes back to you, you know, and, and that's what I've been so lucky to meet people that are like that. And at the end of the day, we're all the same, right? We're just different exactly. titles. And at the end of the day, I put my pants on the same way you do. So I, <laughs> I, I mean, granted, I'm at ESPN. I'm not, I, I, but, but it's, you can be here. Yeah. I mean, it's something that anyone can do. So just appreciate kind people. And it makes me want to be kind. Again. I love that. Okay. So ESPN right now, no sports, obviously, but yeah. what has been huge oh. is the last dance. What, what, <laughs> what have been your thoughts on the last dance so far up to this point? Have you been, it's like, I, if school was like this, I would have been a straight A student, right? Like, I'm learning so much, and I want to watch, and, like, it, it's been, it's been awesome, because you've heard of these things, you've heard of these games, you hear people talk about it, but then seeing it from his, uh, his, his point of view, and all that footage, I've learned so much, I'm so, I'm, I'm so sad it's coming to an end this weekend. I'm not ready. <laughs> Either. But it's so cool. It, it motivates you. And you know what's one thing that stood out to me when Michael Jordan said the thing about he plays every game as if maybe there's somebody in the stands that has never seen him yeah. played. That, I like, that fueled me up. Too. I'm like, I'm going to do the best in every show and interview. Like, if nobody knows who the hell I am or what I'm about. And, yeah. I know. Sure. Yeah. I just think it's crazy just the mindset that he has in everything he does. He just wants to be the best. And he was only in – people, you know – rag on him for going to baseball but it's like he's only there for a short amount of time I mean it usually takes kids years to make it up to the majors and they were like if he would have stayed just a little bit longer he would have been in the majors yeah Francona said that and just have that courage man that courage to like go against what everybody's telling you what you know is right you know what I mean like that's that speaks a lot it's awesome I love it I love it it's so special I love it so what are some of your favorite documentaries just from ESPN Oh my God, all the 30 for 30, you know what? Those are so well put together. And that's one thing that I, 
I want to like maybe uh, not make it a goal. I don't want to transition just to that, but like make it a goal to learn from those producers, those reporters, like a Tom Rinaldi. Oh, mm-hmm. Jordan Jap, the way they ask these questions and the way they get people to answer things and how they formulate a story. Um, I do love the 30 for 30s. Those are my favorite detail as well. I have seen the Peyton Manning ones. And honestly, ESPN Plus content, not because it's ESPN, but it's really good in the way they, really good. What, they what I love about it, that they don't just put out material to put out material. They mm-hmm. put material that, that teaches you, that, that you learn something that, that makes you smarter or gives you something back. And you're not just wasting 30 minutes or an hour. Like you're learning something. And I think that's what we've been trying to do mostly right now with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, they cut a couple sports. So we used to have a lot of sports centers in the morning, seven to 10, and then two extras in the morning. And they cut them and they're like, listen, we don't have a lot of sports leagues going on. I mean, we just got the Korea baseball now, but, um, but you know what I mean? We can't just give the viewer anything to throw anything. Like we have to have a reason and we have to, be smart and teach the viewers still even though we don't have so that's why we've seen like only two sports centers or so they're cut but when when the leagues start uh, opening up again if they do and starting then we'll have more sports centers again it's gonna be so special right when everything yeah. is back to normal and it's crazy yeah. because people you know use sports as a way to kind of get out of their everyday lives and you know relax and just kind of escape for a little bit so what do you think that time's going to be like when once MLB is back or one sport is back, what is that going to do just to society? I think we're appreciating it more, right? Like makes yeah. the park grow fonder. Like even with the UFC, I have a lot of UFC fan friends that are not fans. They're, they're watching and they're like, we just want to see live sports. But I think it makes you appreciate it more a little bit. Just being able to go to a stadium or like for you reporting, you know, like, I mean, how's it going to be against sideline or, or being there? Like it, it makes you look back and appreciate what you have. And if we have to work, during this time, I appreciate it so much, and I'm so thankful for it. But I, I think just grateful that they're back in general. That would be amazing. So when you look at the sports you cover now and what you covered um, in Miami, what are some of the fa- what are, what are some of your favorite memories of sports you've gotten to cover? And for right now, what are the what are your favorite sports and leagues to talk about? So right now, I'm actually, <laughs> don't think I'm a bandwagon, but I love UFC and boxing right now. Um, I, I, I've had the opportunity to cover several boxing uh, events, but the one that I just did was Fury and Wilder. And I'm telling you, my, I, I, was, I was telling somebody, it was like the best, it was the best experience of my entire life at ESPN, I think. <laughs> just, just the access, the way, uh, we have a really amazing boss of Mike McQuaid and the way he sets all of his anchors reporters staff to succeed it's not like we were working with Fox in this one so it was two different complete worlds but we came together as one and the way that our boss set us set us up to succeed was amazing but then also the you get this access being that we have we're top rank and we have we're with top rank we have that access to the to the boxers it was amazing and I so I did that and I covered tight I was literally right there by the, I was crazy um I covered that and then two days later I had to it was for MLS I had to interview David Beckham so, <laughs> and my boss is like so you were telling me it was the best experience of your life uh are we are we still there like, nope you're scratched out David Beckham David Beckham no, that, that wins that wins that was amazing <laughs> but that wasn't even ESPN it was MLS so. I think it's cool how ESPN's really taken over the, like, UFC and fighting yeah. and podcasting it more. It's giving these guys way more publicity and, and you know, airtime. Yeah, and right now, I mean, they're, the, they're taking it. They're, they're the ones that we – they've had three fights in eight – well, they're going to have their last one, their next one on Saturday, but three cards in eight days. The first one did great. Uh, the last night was pretty awesome. It, did, it lived up to the hype, so – They've had, um, I'm glad for the fighters because these fighters survive on these fights and, you know, and it's good to see that they're getting what they deserve with the spotlight and recognition. That's awesome. Okay. Well, I have some rapid fire <laughs> questions. You. Okay. Who is your favorite player ever? Ooh, I have to, oh, uh, okay. So it's Roberto Clemente. Uh, I love him, Robert. But then I love Nolan Ryan. So I'm between those two, but then, like, I need to get a new one. But like, I, 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 Where's my phone? It's here. Like, it's, um, I'll show you. It's, uh, it's Roberto Clemente. He's in my background. Someone's like, is that your boyfriend? (laughs) He's amazing. (laughs) Roberto Clemente. So Roberto Clemente and uh, Nolan Ryan. Love that. Favorite sports book? 
sports book. Oh, Mia Hamm's. So that used to be a big, like, oh, Mia Hamm fan. Her, her, she had an autobiography. Her book was amazing. <laughs> uh, favorite sports movie? Uh, I love Miracle. Don't ask me. That speech gets me. I, I love it. I love Miracle. So hype. <laughs> favorite sports documentary? So there's a Barcelona, a Barcelona one, um, and it, it, I'll, I'll send you the link. It's amazing. It just goes behind the everything. It's just, it's a world. It's a, it's a Barcelona docu. That's awesome. I need to yeah. watch that. Uh, what are you doing? First thing that you're going to do post-quarantine. Uh, hygiene? I know, like, wax my upper lip. <laughs> oh, I have so much to do. My like, my eyebrows are, like, a bold, <laughs> like, if it's... <laughs> no, um, honestly, uh, I can't wait to go to a sporting event, I mean. <laughs> you know cover baseball hopefully if baseball comes back cover a baseball game but if not boxing I think we're having some fights but I don't I see them we don't know what the logistics is going to be but hopefully go to a sporting event love that um what are you most proud of I am most proud of being a Hispanic woman representing in the in the platform that I'm in in English because we do have ESPN Deportes but it's like I look. I'm like we don't have any other Latinas. Like anchoring Sports Center right now, and and I look at it and I'm like, <laughs> and then I'm like, stop. <laughs> but like, it's, it's I, unreal. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Favorite memory? Uh, from what period? <laughs> in, in sports, just in general. Oh, in sports, 2011 Mavericks final, Miami. Yep, that I, I'm never gonna forget that moment. Oh, no. Nice. They broadcasted it last night on our like Fox affiliate. Oh, and okay. Every time I just so good. like I oh my gosh, your Rangers, your Mavericks coverage, like I love it. I'm oh, sorry. I'm just my first my first guest, like when I did like started this podcast in quarantine was Mark Followell and like I've just always looked up to him and we just yeah. talked for like an hour just about twenty eleven. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Okay, and some fan questions. Um someone asked what was the influence that your mom had on you wanting to get into the broadcast industry? Oh my gosh, it was everything because, uh, like I said, like growing up with her, you saw that, you, I just saw how much it meant to her to be, she's like, look, you are the eyes and ears of people that can never, who not, not me say could want to be where you're at, could wish, I mean, could maybe never be at an event that you are, so when you're there, take it seriously and enjoy it, but take, take viewers to where they can be, you are their eyes and just her passion about that like ah oh, and the, it, that's a responsibility and it's one that I love because we as journalists we have that to tell the people that and it's it's such a privilege to be the first or to be there to to report to others or to show others like what we're doing absolutely favorite part of your job my favorite part of my job <laughs> you know what it's honestly just the story the people that you work with the people that you whether it's behind the cameras your producers or you have to interview just getting to hear other people's story and meeting like sometimes your your legend your favorite athletes and stuff because you just see how much their dedication their determination and where they're at what it takes the good the bad and it's fun to get to know that side other than the like because you know how social media is like everything's perfect da, 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 da. just seeing how sometimes sometimes like they turn that 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 fear into power, the, the every everything that happens into power and success. So that, that's really cool. What is it like working for the best sports network? <laughs> it's Disneyland. It's the major leagues. It's it's awesome, and that's why like, I, I I truly truly every time I step on that set, it's like you get the little kind of goosey bumps and chills because you're like, oh my god, this is what you grow up. I grew up watching as well, and uh, and um, it, it's it's a dream come true. So for you, when you, you know, were growing up and breaking into this industry, what was your mindset like, that's the goal, like, to get to a platform? Yeah, yeah because um, I remember, like, I would watch, like, Aaron Andrews and Cone, and I'm like, I want to be, like, them, but one of me, which I guess what I would explain is, like, I, I, would, I, would, I wanted to see a Latina there. I'm like, one day, one day. And that one day is here. The thing that, like, oh, my God, it's here. And, like, yeah, no, and, and it's, it's just, it's awesome. It's awesome. So to be, to be someone who a lot of Latinas look up to that want to break into this industry, like you're someone that they look at and they're like, I can do that too. How, I mean, how cool is that to you? Oh, it's, 
it's it's I don't even believe in myself like I I think that I mean I don't think anyone knows me or anything I'm just I, I but it's when people like I'm like do you really want to interview me Casey because I'm no like, way stop <laughs> so I get I get I, I still get like ah, like oh my god really but then it's a, it's real it's so cool because if I can make it oh my god you can make it yeah you I mean and that's what we have to empower each other and I mean, granted, I, I'm, I'm just one person, but if there's ever anything I could do, uh, like, and whether it's advice or just talking about things or interviews or stuff like that, by all means, because somebody helped me, and I want to give back as well in that sense. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not nothing, I'm not like the Hannahs or anything, but one day, one day, God, that's a cool thing. But <laughs> I saw this interview that Katie Nolan was in, and the interviewer asked her, you know, I've always wanted to be um, like a comedian sports reporter like that's my goal and someone said to her oh well Katie Nolan already does that and Katie Nolan when she asked her about it she's like well why can't there be more yeah why can't, like why is there only have to be one you know Latino sports reporter or one African-American sports reporter or one white blonde sideline reporter why can't there be multiple and I think that's really important and empowering women I feel like that's um kind of the motive of women my age trying to break into the industry, I think we're all kind of trying to rally around each other because okay. just because there's one doesn't mean there can't be 10. Yeah, when it's going to be normal to have dozens of us there, you know what I mean? Then like, uh, and that's what it, and it, I guess it's competitive. Yes, it's competitive as heck, but at the same time, we, we cannot take, make strides if we don't help each other and if we don't. So like Elle Duncan, one of my co-anchors, uh, I was like, listen, I'm struggling with highlights. Like, they're good. They go so fast. I mean, uh, in the sense, like from just like the looking up, the looking, I mean, um, the material and stuff. And she's like, Hey, come over here. And I'll, I, she gave me some tips and oh my gosh, it has helped me. It helped me so much, but she didn't have to do that. Like yeah. I'm her, I'm we're not, her, we're both like, you know what I mean? Like she's like, come on girl, we'll, he'll teach you. Same thing with Jay Harris and Michael. I, they, I've done that. And they, they're more than willing to help. So that I think is an example and what you want to continue to like pass on. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the day when, you know, we can stop saying, Oh, the first NFL female coach, yes, the first, yes. you know, women sports anchor or first women play by play for the NFL or whatever it is, the day we can stop saying that and it'd be the normal, yep. um, it'd be really special. So yes. yes. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I continue to do what you're doing, man. Like you are the future of us. You are the, be, I mean, never, honestly, friend, like, the sky's the limit. Keep working hard. Keep doing, you're awesome. You're, Thank you. I mean, you're, you're engaging, you're friendly, you're knowledgeable, you're passionate. Look at your, whoa. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> honestly, if, just keep doing what you're doing and, and you'll see where this journey will take you. You'll look back and you're gonna be like, wow. And you're gonna be so happy. So continue doing what you're doing. It's awesome to see that the sports world is in hands of people like you. So thank you for having me in your space.